Hello everybody, welcome back to another one of these uh, crash reviews. I know I did one about a year ago for the Ryan Priest flip, where he took off and went through the infield grass for a credit ride. Uh, this time we're going over both the Kyle Sieg wreck that happened on Saturday and the Coil of Joy crash that happened on Monday. Talking about what happened, why these cars got airborne, and uh, to point out some things I don't think no one's really noticed yet. Straight away. So here we go. So this is the first part of the rack here. You see Kelsey go up right there, catches air, and lands on his roof right there. Obviously a flip. Yeah. Let me actually mute the audio so that I can actually get a little bit clearer. Grass catches it, and it goes for another tumble there. Now, what you're going to notice as we go into this shot, this is the most crucial shot, if we watch right stop it right there there are no roof flaps up on that vehicle that is the reason why this car took off i don't know why there are no roof flaps up on the vehicle i don't know what is hindering them i partially think it might be something the team is doing to manipulate the air around the car i don't know that for certain that's my that's only my guess because i know the teams like to manipulate the airflow with the uh the roof flaps in order to get air off the spoiler on the straightaways. You see it back on the Gen 6 era, a lot of the mile and halfs where they would actually, the, the roof flaps would lift up a little bit on the straightaways and then they would set down in the corners. I don't know how they were doing that. I've never deep, deep dived into something like that. They probably something with how they whip the air. But with this right here, there's no roof flaps. I, I don't know what happened. It goes over. I mean, you see it right there. There's no roof flaps up on that car. Right there. I mean, I just keep pausing it. There's just, obviously, there are no roof flaps up. I keep saying that, but nobody has noticed there are there's no roof flaps up. This car just blew over. And, and terminal velocity for a car going over without a roof flap is... I used to hear number 177. But honestly, with the way this car turned around, having another car driven into it, it could be as low as 150. I mean, it's... These cars are designed now aerodynamically to have the roof flaps work, so they don't have to worry as much about the underbody being caught, but they don't work. So if you get spun like this with a car driving in the side of you, you're going to go over at a pretty low speed. I mean, this is, this is a pretty slow blowover, you know? I mean, he's not... These cars are going at most 180 down that back stretch, and the rate he spun at, he probably had slowed down in his forward momentum going about 150, if not slower. Actually, something I just noticed. Look at that. You can see the uh, track bar bent after you hit the wall. It's pretty neat. Look at that. Anyway. So, you know, I just don't know. I think it's being investigated, personally, why that car did not have its roof flaps deploy. Uh, they're up there, but that's because they've been ground across the ground half the way. Actually, if you look right there, there's something orange in the... In where the roof flap sits. it's There's some sort of material on the outer edge. I don't know what that is, but there's some something orange right there. I can't... Let's actually see if we can get a little... And they're stuck up now. That's actually even weird. You see how they're stuck up? We actually go back to a shot when he was sitting down there before. Um, Here we go. Yeah, look at that. I know the one is apparently damaged, but... Uh, they're stuck up. I mean, and I mean straight up. Like you know, you can see that they're they're not really that damaged besides this one here. And this one's actually they're designed to be folded like that because of the um or angled at least, at least a little bit. Uh, if we look back here, I don't know if that is bent because of it. I mean, I showed you there though that the, the roof flaps were not up when he spun. See another angle here actually. So there he goes. Yeah, no roof flaps, no roof flaps. Full 28. You don't see it flip up in the 28 there. It's usually where it would be. Yeah, he just slides along. Whoop. And... I can't, I can't see what that yellow-orange thing is. Try to see if I can get in something. Yeah, see, there again, no roof flaps. I... Look at that. Look at that thing. Just... I, I Unbelievable how that happened, and... No one's talking about that, honestly. That is... Huh. I'm just trying to see if we can get some sort of shot where what that orange thing... Because 
it almost looks like it's some sort of a tape or something like that. Some sort of a bright fluorescent orange tape. Because, I mean, look at that. They're just stuck up. I mean, if you actually look here, when that car rolls back over, I mean, this is violent. And these roof flaps are just stuck open now. I don't... Something was modified on those or done to... I would have to imagine because they were stuck down and then as soon as they went up, they are stuck up. They don't... Usually, even when there's impacts like that, the... The roof flaps move around a little bit. They don't just, they're not just a switch or there's on or off. You know, they, they flap up and they land back down. What usually happens is there's a fabric that attaches to the bottom side of where they hinge up from and the underside of it to, basically it's, it's the, uh, oh, what the heck's it called? What, what's the word I'm looking for? The, a tether to keep the roof flap from over hinging or pull it back down. The only thing is, is if it goes all the way up and then goes back down, it it won't fold back in under the roof flap. It'll fold out and it'll keep it up actually a little bit, which is not optimal. So they'll have to bring it back in and, they'll have, and you'll use the seats back in the day. They would lift the roof flap up and tuck it back in under the, the roof flap and set it back in place. Now this one is the only angle we have of it. And I have so much to say about what the theories are with this. So we'll just watch it first. Turns, catches airborne. Right on his side. I... I don't even know what to think of this. I, I mean... The theories that have wrapped around with this. First off, people have said wind. I don't think it was wind. And the reason why I do not think it is wind is because here, the roof flaps go up. Terminal speed to have roof flaps not work at is 197 miles an hour. That has been a rule of thumb for as long as we've raced with them on the car since 1994 when Jack Roush invented them. 197 is terminal velocity. Okay? So... Why does this car go over? And you say, well, it's the wind speed because of the way the the wind was coming directly at the car uh, with how windy it was at the track. He was probably going in wind 220, 230 miles an hour because you had 190 to it, so on and so forth. He was at most at this point going 190. Uh, remember, this is earlier on the straightaway coming off the corner, so he's probably going more like 187, 188, and these things matter a little bit. And I know it's... We'll round up the 190 for the sake of of pleasure of this theory. You have to remember that when he spins, he's going, he's coming at the camera now. He is coming this way with the, the way of my cursor, right? He's not going full 190 this direction, all right? It, it's a vector. You know, if you've gone through physics in school, you know with vectors... You know, he could be going 197 this way, but now he's going this way and this way. And, you know, obviously his results is going to be wherever the car's pointing, right? So his total this way trajectory, let's, let's call that X for say, this X trajectory, the one that needs to be achieved in order to reach it, it might only be at this point with the way he's coming at the camera and how hard he's turned off. Also, the fact he is slowing, he's already dissipating. I'd say he's probably already down to 180 here in just told, terms of total speed. I would knock another 20 miles an hour off of it because he's already moved from one car length off the top of the track to a car width to this white line in about a half second. That's probably at least oh, what 50 feet in a half second. Is 100 feet per second. So Michigan is 73 feet wide in the corners. I'm just going to say for sake of it, he moved 50 feet. Let's just say, like I said, for 50 feet. He moved 50 feet from the top to the where he is right now in about half a second. Well, that's 100 feet per second, which if you translate 100 feet per second, it's 68 miles an hour. So 68 miles an hour of his total 188 is going towards the camera which means 
he's only going in the other direction of 130, 120. And now, let's, it's probably, this This is being maybe a little over generous with the miles per hour coming at us. Let's say it's more like, I don't know, 40 miles an hour. That's still 150. The wind speed you would need at 30 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour wind gust would only get that up to about 180 to overcome the roof flaps. So it didn't overcome the roof flaps if we do just that theory. It's not the wind. It is not the wind contributing to this. What is contributing to this is what we're going to be looking at in about a second. This. This giant underbody. And I know people are saying, well, it's, is, you know, is, is it really contributing to it? Blah, so on and so forth. This channel here. This channel here. And this channel here, back, and not really, it's not a channel, it's just where they can catch and get under it, are heavily contributing to this car going over. As long as it gets a tiny bit of air under it, this thing goes from acting as an underwing to acting as an actual wing. 80% of this car's downforce, according to the GM representative that was on the Dale Jr. download a couple years ago, said 80% of this car's downforce is generated from the underside body panel. So, if that's the case, if you reverse the effects of this, or or even with it going through the air, let's just say, and it no longer working, the car loses four-fifths of, of its downforce going forward. So only 20% of the car's actual downforce is working to keep it on the ground, even if it was sliding like this. And it might not even be working to keep it on the ground. It obviously isn't working very well here. I... The wind speed thing... I just... It doesn't make sense. I don't... You can't... It seems like a really easy way to just say... Because if you just dumb it down and say, Well, it's just adding 30 miles an hour to 190. Again, the car's coming at us. And you're also assuming that it's 30 miles an hour steady at the car. Right? It's gusting. Right? Maybe it gusted right in that moment. It gusted right at the moment he spun. Also, it needs to be at surface 30 miles an hour. It can't be 30 miles an hour up in the air. You know, Have you ever laid on the ground and felt the air at 30 miles an hour? You know, These cars are only at roof height, what, 4 feet? I don't know the actual height of a cup car right now. But the actual place where the air can get under the car is ground level. The wind needs to be an inch off the ground 30 miles an hour. To back up what I said just a minute ago, this car's takeoff speed is drastically lower because of the underwing on this car. Watch Briscoe's crash here from a couple years ago. This is at Daytona. He spins, he hits the wall. He loses a ton of speed right here. He's getting pushed into, yeah, still getting pushed. But he's, he is, I mean, if you look how fast Logano's pulling away from him here, you know, Logano's probably already slowed to about, I would say, 185 here probably, maybe even slower than that. He's put that much, isn't I'd say Briscoe's probably going 130, 140 here directly at us, conservatively. Look at how much that car gets air. Right like that. Watch it. Watch the inlet. The inlet's right here. Whoop. I mean, that thing's got... Look how much air that car got at one point. I mean, it's at least a yard off the ground. And then the roof flaps here actually work and set it back down. I just don't see how we can keep ignoring the fact that this underwing is causing these flips. Uh, I, I'm not saying we need to slow the cars down. I understand that Hamlin... And I think even Dale Jr. said it where it's much better to have the car flip like it did than have him just pace the inside wall. I do agree. I just worry about wrecks where cars blow over in the pack and they're upside down. You know, it's one thing to say I'd rather flip fly flip over than hit the wall hard. It's another to have a guy legitimately almost take off when he shouldn't be taking off. Like Briscoe should not be blowing over here. I, I, there is no, there's, there's no reason he should be getting this much air 
right here. There's just there's just no reason. He's not going fast enough. He's already hit the wall and somewhere else. He's going 130 miles an hour. Here's Harrison Burton's flip from a couple years ago. Um, just really quickly, look at it here. I mean, this is this is very similar to what we just had. Whoop! It's not as quick because he's not going as fast. Uh, but you know, he's still going. I would say probably about 150, 160, and the car takes over, takes off the same exact way. I mean, almost identically the same way as a uh, Priestess. He actually, or not Priestess, sorry, as, as LeJoy's. Now, I know they added the rear window deflector on the car. I don't think that's going to help much, if at all. The car is not getting the lift, per se, from the actual cockpit here. The cockpit's sealed. You know, maybe from here and and, and, and here, maybe, uh, you know, I, I just don't see it. See the car getting it. The car is getting lift from this whole thing right here. Look at this. Right there. Look at how look at the car. How much air it can get under there. Lastly, we'll look at Priest's crash again. I mean, this is very similar as well to how he gets hooked through the grass like uh like Mr. LeJoy did earlier this week. I mean, he goes through and I mean just takes off. Watch. He's going to catch air just right there. I mean, look, the whole... I pointed that out in the last year when I reviewed this. That whole side is just the thing picking up the car. Look, I mean, the thing's flying on the... on the underpan. And this is the thing I worry about with the car flipping, is just how violent this flip was. This is what hurt him more than anything else. And the car, I mean... Did a good job holding together besides the window net coming undone, like I mentioned last year, and they haven't addressed really. But I just, you know, they can pave as much grass as they want. It's not going to stop the underwing picking these cars up off the ground. Uh, you know, I'm not against them paving grass. It's just, that's not fixing this. Fixing this is, uh, in my opinion, is getting rid of the underpan.